Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salli wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala ala ashabi ajma'in Wa man tabi'an bihassan ila umid dini amma ba'd So this hadith is narrated by Abdullah An Abi An Abi al-Abbas Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said That he said Kuntu khalfa rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right? So he said I was behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Now do you guys know all Abdullah Do you all, do you all know Abdullah ibn Abbas? Okay, you're gonna Sheikh you're gonna have to time me on this okay I have a very bad habit of going over time. Sure. So, does everybody know Abdullah ibn Abbas? One person said yes. Two. Yes. Okay, who's Abdullah ibn Abbas? He's not yes. Who's Abdullah ibn Abbas? Come on, what is he? Yes, excellent. Son Abbas, good. Somebody's awake. Come on, guys, you gotta help me out. You're, you're making my talk too long. What's unique about him? Good, he's one of the scholars of Islam. Yes, the Prophet made dua for him. Anything else? Sorry? He's the cousin of Prophet. Good. Anything about any else? How old was he when the Prophet died? Six, no. Not the, when did the Prophet die? How old was Abdullah? I should, I should sorry. I should be clear. Uh, the, the answer is correct. The Prophet died at 63. <laughs> But what I meant to ask was, how old was Abdullah ibn Abbas when the Prophet Sallallahu had died? Well, close. Very close, actually. Anywhere between 13 to 15. Okay. Now, uh, the reason I'm mentioning this is because I want you to understand that the Prophet Sallallahu gave this advice to a person who we usually would consider a teenager. What, 10th grader, 9th grader this time? 15 years old? 9th grade? Okay. And he gave him this hadith. And it's, it really, there's so many lessons for it. But it's just going to give perspective of... How the Prophet ﷺ, actually, it's kind of interesting, it goes also with this hadith, nasiha to everybody, okay, advice to everybody. So, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he was sitting behind the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Kuntu khalf al-Nabi ﷺ. Another narration, Kuntu radif al-Nabi ﷺ. And he said, Ya ghulam, inni u'allimka kalimat. Right. Oh, young man, I'm going to teach you a few words. So, one thing he did was he grabbed his attention first. And he said, I'm going to teach you a few words. Ihfadillah yahfadhk. Ihfadillah tajidhu tijahak. إذا سألت فاسأل الله وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله وأعلم أن لو أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن ينفعوك بشيء لم يكتبه الله لك لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك وإذا اجتمعوا وإن اجتمعوا على أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتب الله عليك رفعت الأقلام وجفت الصحف. In another narration, there's a few other editions. احفظ الله تجده أمامك تعرف إلى الله يعرفك في الرخاء. وأعلم يعرفك في الش... يعرف يعرف تعرف الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة وأعلم أن ما أخطأك لم ي... لم يكن ليصيبك وما أصابك لم يكن ليخطئك وأعلم أن النصر مع الصبر وأن الفرج مع الكبر وأن مع السلوس. So I'm going to translate all this and I only have 20 minutes to do this. No, 15 now, right? You have a little more. A little more. Okay, good. So the first part of the hadith, the first advice that the Prophet Sallam gave this, and you're going to have to tell me which part is the interpersonal skills, by the way. Okay. He asked the Prophet, the Prophet told him, he said, What does ihfad mean in Arabic? Memorize, right? So he says, memorize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does this sound right? Something's off, right? What does ihfad mean? Come on. It's true. Do you know why they call it memorize ihfad? Because you're, you're right. It's like keep or you're protecting what the information in your head. So, ihfad actually means what? To protect. All right, now we have another problem. It says, ihfadillah, protect Allah. Does, does that make sense? All right, so what does it mean then? I'm going to make you make jump. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you I'm going to do jumping jacks, okay? Come on, guys. Yes. Protect his teachings. Excellent, right? Which means it's a bit more than that, but that's included. So, ihfadillah, ihfad, it means ihfad hududahu, right? Protect the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hududahu, right? So it has to do with quite a few other things. So it means, احفظ hududahu wa حقوقahu wa amamera. So to obey his boundaries that he has placed. To protect the orders that he ordered us with, the obligations. And to protect and not fall into the prohibitions. So this is what it means to protect. It means protect the boundaries, the rights of Allah. It means protect the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The return of it is, احفظ الله يحفظك. 
He will protect you. Okay? How? Come on, guys. How? Protect your money? Yes. Why not? Come on. Protect your kids? Protect your iman? Excellent. And it encompasses all that. Protection comes in two aspects. Your worldly things and the things in the hereafter. We all want everything to be protected. Is that right? Your health, your wealth, your children, your business, your iman, your hereafter. Right? Your worldly things and things of the hereafter. And the most important aspect of it, is, of course, is your iman. You guys all agree? Good. So if we want the protection of Allah, it means that we have to protect the rights of Allah. Now this is a relationship with Allah. Generally relationships, you can divide them into two categories. Relationship with the creator and the creation with the, the sorry, relationship with the creator and the relationship with the creation. So this is the relationship with the creator. You guard his boundaries. Okay. Obligations. Name an obligation. Five times a day. Good. Excellent. One of the major things. Anything else? Sorry? Worship Allah. That's in the prayers. Good. So we got that over. Zakah. Excellent. Five pillars. Anything else? What? No manners involved? Come on, guys. What happened to obeying parents? Actually, I shouldn't say obeying. Being dutiful to parents. Isn't that part of it? Yes, you agree? Not insulting others. Is that part of it? What does that sound familiar? Isn't that interpersonal skills? So part of protecting and guarding the rights of Allah is guarding also the rights of the creation. Because we're ordered to. That's your interpersonal skills. You don't insult others. You don't behave badly towards others. You're honest towards others. You give them the nasiha. That's the first, the other hadith we're talking about, the one before me. You give them the right of the nasiha that they deserve. So that is part encompassed in guarding the rights of Allah Ta'ala. If you do so, Allah will protect you in the worldly things, your affairs, and in the hereafter. And of course, the best of protection is your protection in Iman. Because if you lose this Iman, you lose this world and the hereafter. You guys all agree? Is that right? So which means that if we really want Allah to protect us, we should not leave this room until we have, like, you know, have a strong resolve that we're going to obey everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to perform. Refrain from every single prohibition. Everybody agrees? Yes? Good. Excellent. All right. So that's the first part. It says, And then, Protect the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find him in front of you. And another narration, Amamak, which is in front of you. Tijahak, Amamak, same thing. Now all that means is that if you guard the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guard his rights, he will be with you, ahead of you, guiding you, supporting you. And we all need the support of Allah. Is that right? Okay, good. Now the other narration comes in, which is kind of beautiful. It says, Ta'araf ilallahi fi ya'rafka fi shidda. It means get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your time of ease. He will know you in your time of difficulty and hardship. Is that right? Alhamdulillah, we have a pretty, like in the majority of us, relatively speaking to other people, populations in the world, we do have a relatively, like, you know, alhamdulillah, a beautiful life, a calm life, a tranquil life. And it's the most important time that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. Because there will be always a time when we need Allah. We have to put forth something. And this, by the way, is not something that is strange. It has mentioned you know, two stories in the Quran. Okay, I'll just top of my head. If you compare Yunus alayhi salam to Fir'aun. You guys all know who Yunus is? Alayhi salam? Yes? Good. And Fir'aun. What happened to Yunus? Alayhi salam. By swallowed by the fish. And then what happened? Astaghfirullah, good. Astaghfirullah, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had rescued him. But the verse I'm, I'm talking about over here is kind of interesting. So the verse says, فَلَوْلَا أَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ If it wasn't that he was from the musabbihin before. If it wasn't that, لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ He would have remained in the stomach of that fish until the day of judgment. He got to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his time of ease, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Helped him in the time of 
difficulty. All right, let's look at Pharaoh. What happened to Pharaoh in the end? He drowned. But what did he say before that? Sorry? A good, good, it's too late. But when he said, Amantu, I believed in the Lord of Bani Israel. But what was the response? Al-an, now, you're doing it now? Too late, right? There was nothing before that. You don't have an account beforehand. So if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in your time of difficulty, you have to get to know him first. Now one interesting thing about this hadith is if you notice, it is almost what you do, you get rewarded of the same kind. You protect the boundaries of Allah, the rights of Allah, he will protect you. Get to know him in your time of ease, he'll know your time of difficulty. And then the Prophet ﷺ instructed Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ If you ask, then ask of whom? Allah. And if you seek help, seek it from Allah. Now this is from the Fatiha, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِنْ Because really asking Allah is a form of worship. It's ibadah. It also has a beautiful component of tawakkul. Is that right? You guys agree? Tawakkul depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only you we ask. We don't need to ask anyone else. You guys agree? How many of us want their friends to keep asking them about things? You guys are not too kind, are you? Come on. No generosity in this place? Actually, nobody does. Nobody, like, you know, nobody wants people to ask them all the time. Is that right? Yes? yes? But Allah does, doesn't he? Does Allah want you to ask him all the time? Yes. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ اَدْعُونِي أَسْجَجِبْ لَكُمْ Another verse, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي Right, those who are arrogant from asking me. Is that right? So here's the question. Now I'm going to take an interpersonal skill from this one. Because if you only ask Allah and don't ask others, isn't that good interpersonal skills that you don't bother people? You're always on that good like, you know, terms with them. Because your best of friends, if you keep asking them, the minute they see you on the street, what are they going to do? Oh, I didn't see him, right? Yeah, ignore you. Thank you. Somebody said it. Thank you. Ignore you, right? Pretend they didn't see Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you, right? I didn't see you coming. Like, you know, of course, this is a lie. We shouldn't be doing that. But this is what happens. So this is interpersonal skills that you can take from that. That you only depend on Allah. You only ask Allah. If you ever need a thing, you only depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also this means, this is the, like, you know, it's kind of interesting. It's the definition of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We all say this, right? But what does it mean? La hawla, which means you're not going to change your state of affair from one state to another, except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's strength and aid and support. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. We seek your help and support in doing all these things. All right, now the last part of the hadith the Prophet ﷺ said, وَعْلَمْ And know that if the entire ummah collectively came together to benefit you with something, they would never benefit you with anything except that Allah has written you'll benefit from it. And if the entire ummah has, ga has gathered to harm you with anything, they would never harm you with anything except that Allah has written upon you. رُفِعَ الْقَلَمْ the pen has been elevated and the sheets or the, the, like, you know, the pages have dried. Okay. So, many of the scholars actually tell you that this is the core of the hadith and everything above it that was mentioned is the fruit of this aspect. Because if you know that nothing in the world you can ever get except if Allah wants it and nothing in the world bad can happen to you except if Allah has written it, does it mean that you would only ask Allah? Yes, or should we ask our neighbors? Come on, guys. You would ask Allah. You seek the help from? Is that right? You always worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In addition to that hadith, like you know, the Prophet sallallahu had mentioned, وَإِنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرَ Verily, victory is by, comes with patience. Now this holds true in anything we want in our lives. Whether to conquer our own 
negative aspects perhaps. We all have things that we struggle against, but victory over what we're struggling with will never be attained except with patience. And this requires asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, وَأَنَّ الْفَرَجَ مَعَ الْكَرْبِ that relief company's affliction and ease وَأَنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ that ease company's hardship. But once again, if you understand these things, it gives you beautiful hope and dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you completely depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once again, go back to the beginning of the hadith, interpersonal skills, you only worry about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your time of ease. You only ask Allah and worship Allah. All those are beautiful dependent skills. You protect the right of Allah. It brings out the proper interpersonal skills we have with the creation. Because we are doing everything only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.